Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. We are delighted to have Andre Brusgalis, one of our senior application consultants with us. Andre will be presenting on warehouse flavors in Business Central. And as a reminder, we are recording this webinar and we will post it to our on-demand webinar library for you to review again or share with anyone. You can find our library under our resources tab on our website Innovia.com, and we do encourage you to ask questions during our presentation, so feel free to type them into the questions box and we will get them answered during our Q&A time at the end of our session. So now I'm going to turn it over to Andre to kick off our presentation. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to our webinar, Warehouse Flavors in Business Central. Uh, my name is Andre Brusgoulis, and I'm a senior application consultant uh, with Anovia. Uh, the reason why we all got here today is to talk about the um, what functionality is available in Business Central to deploy warehousing, configure warehousing, and cover some of the major questions that usually are important, you know, answers for as part of the implementation process. As Angie mentioned um, in her uh, um, introduction, you can ask questions, type your questions uh, into the question box. We'll cover those questions at the end of the presentation. I just wanna make sure that since we have a lot to cover, our presentation flows smoothly, and then we'll attend to all of your questions at the end. If um, um, we won't be able to cover all the questions, I um, will follow up with you directly via the email after the webinar is over. So without any further delay, let's uh, start. Um, usually when I um, begin the working on the implementation project uh, for warehousing, I try to understand very early in the project uh, one main thing. Do we really need to think about the, the advanced warehouse with the directed PIP put away as an option, or should we be focusing on other options available in Business Central? The reason for that is very simple. Uh, even though directed PIP put away delivers a lot of functionality in Business Central and allows you to do pretty much anything you want with your warehouse, out of the box in BC, that it may not be a good fit for every company that we're working with. Like, for example, directed pick put away might be a good fit for a distributor, like a food distribution company. But at the same time, if we start looking at the company and we realize that there is a lot of manufacturing activity going on, uh, on the top of distribution, selling, purchasing, that maybe we have to ask ourselves if directed pick put away really is a right fit for this company. So to uh, get a better understanding, I usually start with a simple set of questions that I'm gonna present to you today that will also help you to evaluate your current environment and uh, be more prepared at the time when we come to assist you uh, with warehousing needs. So, uh, do you really need directed pick put away? 12 questions to ask at any point in time when you feel like you're ready for warehousing. So, um, the first one is, are you planning to use warehouse zones? in your environment. What is a warehouse zone? A warehouse zone is pretty much a feature um, when directed pick put away enabled that allows you to uh, group your bins uh, with specific parameters. It also helpful when you're running the reports or making the selections as you creating, let's say, uh, the warehouse picks so it's a very helpful feature that um, is available with directed pick put away and there are a couple of parameters that you can assign to the warehouse zones that will later on propagate 
to the bins that you add to the warehouse zone. If you think what warehouse zone might be in your warehouse, a good example would be, for example, uh, a bulk zone or a pickable zone pretty much breaking your warehouse in a larger area, in, in smaller areas where you would uh, keep your products in, stored in, in pallets or available in cases or units. So it's probably one of the best examples of how to utilize warehouse zones uh, with directed pick put away enabled. Um, the second one is warehouse classes. Sounds very close to the warehouse zones, and sometimes it might be confusing, but at the same time, it's a totally different parameter that is used to uh, provide additional validation at the time of the put away to see if the product that you are receiving can be stored in the bin in the system. And that's where the, this warehouse classes come uh, in play. You can assign a warehouse class to the item and to the bin in the um, in in uh, business central. And uh, by if if the match isn't found, the system will basically flag you and let you know that the item cannot go into into that specific bin. So, for example, let's say you have um, a frozen, dry, and a cooler area in your warehouse, and you're receiving the items that needs to go to the frozen bin or bin that is in the frozen environment then uh, the system will control that and give you an advance warning if somebody will try to select the bin that isn't marked as a warehouse class frozen so that's where the main difference is between the warehouse zones and warehouse warehouse classes uh, the other one uh, next on the list is special equipment. Maybe it doesn't drive necessarily any functionality um, in um, Business Central, but it's very helpful and again only is available when you use directed pick put away that allows you to assign special equipment that um, uh, warehouse team uh, needs to be aware about before they go, uh, for example, to perform a pick. Maybe they need uh, a special uh, forklift that accommodates two pallets, or maybe they need to have some type of personal protection equipment that they need to wear, like maybe gloves or a heavy coat if they go into the controlled environment where the temperatures can be can go as low as minus thirty Fahrenheit. So that if the special equipment is assigned it will be printed on the PIC document and the warehouse team can be better aware of what needs to be done before they begin the PIC. The other option, which is very helpful for some companies, is uh, cross-docking. Just by its name, probably a lot of people will see what happens here, but to simplify what cross docking is is simply you receive the product at your receiving dock and then and then you can immediately fulfill uh the sales order once the product is received without having that product to be put away into the warehouse and then picked at the later time that a lot of in a lot of cases saves a lot of unnecessary movements because the product can just be simply redirected from receiving to a shipping zone. And in some companies, in reality, as we all know, it might be even the same area in the warehouse or two areas which are located very close to each other. So having cross docking enabled allows you to do that. And there is another feature in the cross docking that also allows you to basically take a look and see how far in advance you are fulfilling the orders to realize do i need to do cross docking on the spot because maybe the order is um uh is uh, is supposed to go out today and then um the system is going to apply the cross docking and then in case if there is an order where for example the order isn't going to be fulfilled until a week from now then why would i need to pile up the inventory in my shipping area when I can just put it away. So there is 
uh, a feature, a parameter there that allows you to determine a period of a time associated with cross docking as well. The next one is um, um, bin types and uh, bin priorities, or actually in um, uh, Business Central, it's called bin ranking. And uh, let's let's focus first on bin types. With directed pick put away enabled, the bin types allow you to define what type of bin uh, you're maintaining in the system. You may have, for example, a pickable bin. Uh, that bin is only going to be there for you to pick the inventory from. So if the bin is defined as a pickable bin, you cannot really put the inventory away into that bin. Uh, the other type of a bin uh, is a put-away bin. In this case, this bin will only be used by the system and considered by the system at the time when you create your put-aways, um, when directed to put-away enabled, of course. The third type of a bin could be a mix, a put-away pig bin. On rare occasions, uh, companies may have those special bins, special bins where they want to put the inventory away and pick from the same bins at the same time. So this mixed type of a bin is available as well. The uh, other type of a bin is a bin with no type. What are these bins for? In reality, you can find those bins are very helpful when you want to have some special bins that system doesn't consider when it creates picks, or put away documents. Or basically those bins are usually used for purposes like QA, quality control, where you only want to move the inventory and sit there until the inventory is further evaluated and then the decision is made which bin that inventory might be going to um, uh, at a later time. So this is what bin types are for. And again, I want to stress out all the questions that we're asking here are only, or all the features that we're talking about here are only available uh, with directed pick put away. And that's why it's important to know the answer to these questions. If the answer is yes or no, to make a decision, do we really need directed pick put away or not? So let's go back to the bin uh, ranking. Bin ranking is uh, literally a number that you assign um, to a bin to, uh, indicate um, how how the system should be evaluating that bin at the time when it's creating a pick. So being, uh, usually what happens when you create a pick in the directed pick put away environment, the system sends you to the bin, of course, if there are quantities in that bin that has the highest rank. And um, in this case, uh, if you have the inventories available in that bin, it's, your pickers are going to be sent to that bin first. And then if uh, there is not sufficient quantity in that bin, they will be sent to a bin with a lower priority. Bin ranking is also very important uh, at the time when you perform uh, bin replenishment. When you try to move the, when you need to move the inventory, for example, from a bulk storage to the pickable bins, um, usually it's important to make sure that when your pick team is ready to go picking, your pick bins have enough inventory to complete the pick. So basically they filled up to the uh, max. The way how it works with bin replenishment, if there is uh, if the quantities fall below the minimum uh, quantity in the pickable bin, uh, then the inventory is moved uh, to the pickable bin from the bulk storage bin uh, and filled, and that pickable bin is filled up to the max. One thing to remember here that it's very important to make sure that your priorities uh, or ranking is set up properly because the inventory will be only moved from a bulk bin to the pickable bin in case of the ranking on the bulk bin is lower than the ranking on the pickable bin. So let's move to the next uh, group of questions. Um, the next question I would ask is, do you really need to bin capacity? Uh, and what is bin capacity first? 
what you can do in Business Central, you can assign a weight limit and the uh, cubage limit to a bin. And if it is assigned, the system will evaluate those parameters before suggesting putting inventory away into the bin based on uh, the load of, on the existing load of the bin by weight and the cubage. Uh, there are a couple of uh, actually three options uh, in Business Central that allow you to ignore this setting, to allow to go above the max or uh, prevent you from going over the max. The next question is related to put away units of measure. In a uh, directed pick put environment, we have this feature that allows us to uh, put the inventory away after it was received using a different unit of measure than the one on the purchase order. And in some cases, it's very helpful, especially when purchasing is doing the buying using, for example, pallets, because uh, let's say for a distribution company, uh, a pallet, they, they can get a better pricing when they price product by a pallet. And, uh, but when the product is received, they really would like to put it away in a smaller unit of measure, for example, a case or maybe even a unit. So that's where the put away unit of measure comes very handy. Um, uh, you know, when directed peak put away is enabled. Um, now, what happens uh, at the time of the put away in the system? Well, first of all, again, put away is only enabled, um, uh, is available when um, directed peak put away might be disabled, but directed peak put away when directed pick put away is set to on, the system really gives you another uh, level of functionality, and that is called uh, uh, put away template. You can define multiple put away templates in the system and uh, assign it to at the location level or at the item level. And in this case, the system will look at the template and define the rule or basically to determine the rules that it needs to follow when it's making a logical decision where to put the items away after they were received. Um, a good example would be, for, exa uh, for example, if you need to always store an item in the same unit of measure in a specific bin, you can define this as one of the rules and then the system will evaluate that rule first. And if that rule matches and there are no other limitations, like for example, bin capacity, the system will direct you to put items into that specific bin. So that's how put away templates work. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you can either assign um, the put away template at the location level. And this, in, in this case, this template will be applicable to all of the items for that location, or you can be more specific and assign put away templates at the item level. Um, the next one is um, picking by ranking. We sort of touched on this when we talked about uh, bin types and uh, being ranking. I just wanted to make sure that this question is always asked because uh, the sometimes people may miss the point and being ranking is very important because if you really want to arrange your picks based on the being ranking, you need to have directed pick put away enabled so you can assign that being ranking to the bin to allow the system to direct you to the proper bin based on uh, the bin ranking assigned to the bins. The last feature on this slide, at least, because we have a couple more on the next slide, is um, a break bulk. Uh, this is a very 
powerful feature that uh, is available with directed peak put away. And it can be um, used, if, it, if it's enabled, it can be used in a couple of uh, scenarios. So for example, scenario number one, uh, you have a bulk storage area where you store everything by case. But uh, when you replenish your pickable bin, bins, you really need to uh, replenish those bins in units. So when break bulk is enabled, uh, the system will allow you to do that, where you will pick a case uh, from a bulk bin. And when you put that case into a pickable bin, the system is going to break it down into the units and this way when the order needs to be fulfilled you basically go and take the single bottles of ketchup for example instead of uh, picking the full case the other application of a break bulk is also associated is associated with uh, the fulfillment process the way how it works out of the box in business central is the following you may have an order let's say for example uh for um three bottles of uh barbecue sauce and uh for one reason or another uh, the, the the replenishment of the bin wasn't done on time or something else happened but you do have those um barbecue um uh, uh that barbecue sauce in in a case so what the system will do if that case is in a pickable bin what the system will do it will still send the picker to that bin where the case is available and at the time of pick it will break down the case allow you to pick three bottles of barbecue sauce leaving if we had a dozen in the box leaving nine bottles nine units available in that big uh, in that bin as units now the same can happen on reverse if for example uh, um, it might not be applicable to all the companies, but in certain cases, for example, if you need to pick and send a, a full case of a product, but you may have units available um, in a couple of bins, the system will send you to those two uh, bins and allow you to consolidate your units to make sure that you're shipping out a full case of a product you know, in case if the sales order was entered, for example, for one case. So it works in both, uh, in both directions, breaking down the bulk or building the case if needed to be. Let's move to the other questions. Uh, automated bin replenishment. Do you need it or not? We've already talked on a couple of occasions, but again, when the conversations are going on in the conference room, people are participating, somebody might be late for a conversation, it doesn't hurt to ask a question. Automated bin replenishment based on the min max levels and bin ranking. Do you really need this functionality or not? I'm not gonna go too much into the details talking about this because we already covered this, but just remember, it's a very important question to ask yourselves or your co-workers to better understand if directed pick put away is something that your company really needs. The last question is, uh, some people refer to this as a, a possibility to separate the duties and segregate the functionality or tasks that uh, different teams are working on. Uh, but in reality, it's just, do we want to make sure that our warehouse team just does whatever they need to do on the floor of the warehouse, adjusting the quantities, moving the quantities, and without thinking what financial impact those um, transactions may have, and then to have a, a front office team to cover the financial part of this. If the answer is yes, then the directed peak put away is what you need to enable. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, for Let's say your uh, warehouse team goes out there on the floor in the morning and suddenly realize that over a uh, night something happened and the, the shelf broke and a case fell off and the content of the case now isn't usable. 
So they need to reduce the um, uh, quantity available in that bin. So when the fulfillment time comes in, the system is aware that those quantities are not longer available in the bin. So they just perform a negative adjustment um, at the bin level and just and then they move on to perform their other daily uh, activities. What uh, the front office team at this point in time can do, they can run um, uh, a special process uh, available in the item journal to see if there were any warehouse uh, adjustments done. And uh, the system will basically look and identify those adjustments and present them uh, these adjustments in the item journal for the front office team so they can evaluate what those adjustments are, if they're valid, and if all looks good at that point in time, the front office team, or in, in a lot of cases, it's an accounting team, they will post the item journal. And at that point in time, only the system will remove the quantities um, and basically reduce the quantities in, um, in the item layer. So the first step was, was to just change the quantities of the bin. And this would uh, allow the system to be aware that we now have less in the bin than it was in the bin yesterday. And the second step is actually remove those quantities out of the inventory and create a financial transaction that will be posted to GL. So 12 questions, 12 answers. If all the answers are no, I sometimes take a deep breath and say, maybe we are in the situation where we don't really need to have a directed keep put away enabled. Not because I don't like this feature, but only because we need to be fully aware of what this feature brings along when we're working on the warehousing implementation. And we don't want to overwhelm the customers uh, with a functionality that sometimes isn't necessary. So again, if the, if the answers to all of these questions is no, congratulations. You do not need directed be put away. Let's take a look at this point in time at what warehouse configurations uh, are available. I'm only going to go through some uh, mostly very popular um, or commonly used configurations. And keep in mind that knowing what we're going to discuss now is going to help you to maybe build your own configuration that will be a mix of a couple of configurations that we mentioned here, or maybe you will uh, turn off one of the switches to make sure that it's uh, it fits better to your environment. So let's dive into it. The first one is very simple. It's a basic location with no bins. We all know what this is. Just to give you a, um, provide you a high level overview of a slide, the top line basically shows you a parameters and if these parameters are enabled or not at the location setup level. And I'm only reviewing inventory receiving, shipping, and adjustments. Of course, we can talk about the production, but the time for this webinar doesn't just allow us to go that deep. Maybe next time we'll just cover the production and warehousing in one webinar. So no bins, no flags. It's a basic location. In this case, as we all know, when we receive the inventory, we use purchase orders. We receive of the purchase orders. When the purchase order is received, the inventory quantities are updated in the system. Uh, when we ship the product, we work with a sales order. And in this case, we ship of the sales order. When we post the uh, uh, shipment, the quantities again are reduced in the system and we don't need to worry about anything else. Inventory adjustments, pretty much the same way. The quantities are adjusted in the system as we work with an item journal. One thing to keep in mind here that with a basic location, um, you usually work always with one document, either that would be a purchase order, a sales order, or an item journal. So in this case, um, you pretty much, if you have your warehouse team managing the shipments, they would need to have access to the sales order. In some cases, some companies may have issues with 
having um, the information such as pricing uh, available to the warehouse team. Of course, you can modify your layouts of the screens uh, where the, the pricing isn't shown and so on and so forth. Great feature, very friendly. And if uh, you are, if you have a small warehouse uh, that doesn't complicate your daily operations, it could be very useful. The next one is we just add one feature. We'll enable bins. And in this case, um, the situation with the location remains about the same as with without bins. The only thing is you basically introduce a smaller units within your warehouse. And if your warehouse is relatively large, where sometimes uh, people might need to get a little more directions on where to go to find the inventory at the time of picking, maybe that's when you enable bins. Again, with bins enabled, uh, the inventory receiving, inventory shipping, and adjustments are performed on the documents, on the sales or the purchase order item journal. The only uh, thing you need to remember in this case that you would need to provide the bins. And the bins can default to the documents if you identify the default bins. And again, but again, in this particular situation, you are working with sales orders, purchase orders, and item journals, just one document in each particular scenario, and uh, you don't need to do anything else. But bins allow you to, to provide some additional directions to your warehousing team. Now, let's move to the next level. Uh, receiving picking locations with bins. So what's the difference between this one and the one that we just reviewed? What we did here, receiving and picking. And what does it do to our process? Well, let's take a look. Now, our purchasing team will be creating a purchase order and the purchase order is gonna be available in the system. And the warehouse team, when they receive the product, instead of going to the purchase order, they will work with a warehouse receipt which is a warehouse document that allows you, when the quantities on that document are posted, uh, basically which allows you to uh, segregate some of the duties or break the duties between the purchasing team and the warehouse warehousing team. When the warehouse receipt is posted, a couple of things may happen depending on the configuration of the warehouse. And what I mean by that, if directed pick put away is enabled in addition to this or not, the quantities could be added to the receiving bin, or in, you can also um, set up your um, bin content in a such way so the quantities will be the, the warehouse team will be directed to go to the default bin instead. And depending again upon if, if it's a receiving bin and directed pick put away is enabled or not, the quantities may or may not be immediately available for picking because if the quantities are still in the receiving bin, they cannot be picked until they are put away into your warehouse. So this is one thing to keep in mind. When, we inventory, when, when you go through the inventory shipping, Again, when you pick the quantity from the bin, you use inventory pick instead of a sales order, which is a document that you can create from a sales order. In this case, the, what, where you benefit, is, your benefit is in, in, in the fact that you can send a picker to multiple bins to pick the same item. Because with other two options, uh, location with, that, with no bins or location with, the, with bins, you can bin, pick only from one bin. So if the inventory isn't available in that bin where the, 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 you're going to send the picker, you need to move the inventory into that bin first or change the bin at the, um, at the document level. Here, if you have the inventory uh, available in multiple bins, you can just, you know, all of those bins was, will be listed on the pick. Uh, with the first bin being default and the other bins listed in the alphabetical order on the pick document 
to pick the item. So it's helpful when uh, because it eliminates a, a step of consolidating the inventory into a single bin before you proceed with picking. When the pick is posted, when the inventory pick is posted, um, at that point in time, item is considered to be uh, shipped in case if directed pick put away isn't enabled and there is no shipment option enabled. But we'll talk about this a little later. The inventory adjustments. Uh, again, the quantities are updated at the bin location level when the uh, item journal is posted. This is a very helpful uh, feature uh, for uh, companies that would like to have a, bit, a little bit better control and possibly uh, be a, li a little bit more effective on the pick side, receiving side, um, and uh, is used very uh, commonly for a lot of our customers. The next next option is receiving pick, uh, receiving picking locations with bins and put away. So pretty much what we do here, we just enable one more uh, feature, put away. And when we do that, the only difference between this configuration and the previous configuration is that when after we process the receiving using the warehouse receipt, the quantities are added to the receiving bin. And then the system can either automatically create a put away document, depending again on, on the flags set in Business Central, or we can create put away documents manually at the later time to take the inventory out of the receiving bin and move it to the put away bins. So that's pretty much the biggest difference. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time on covering the inventory shipping and inventory adjustments because they work in exactly the same way as with the previous configuration. The next one is receiving pick and location with the uh, bins put away and shipments. So the inventory receiving pretty much remains the same as was in the, on the slide that we just reviewed. Uh, where, uh, when we post the warehouse receipt, the inventory is added to the receiving bin, and then we either um, manually create a put-away document or the system can automatically create a put-away put document for us so we can put that inventory away. The main difference comes on the shipping side now. So now we're working with two documents here as well. It's inventory pick to pick the product from the bin, from a pickable bin, and move it into the shipping bin. And then the next document that um, is used called warehouse shipment. When that document is posted, the system removes the quantities from the shipping bin and updates the quantities at the location level. This is helpful when you deal with the uh, when you work with a warehouse where there are multiple picking teams uh going and picking the product and then moving into the staging area and then there is a shipping shipment team that basically packs the products make sure it's uh, broken down properly pelletized and so on and so forth and then once this is complete now they proceed and post the warehouse shipment this way your warehouse never touches the sales document picking team works with inventory pick warehouse shipment team working with warehouse shipments and you have a full control and visibility at what stage uh, in the process the the, the full order fulfillment is in so your um, customer service team can see that again uh, the inventory adjustments behave in, this, in the same way so these are five uh, most used configurations and then, as I mentioned earlier, you can kind of like mix them and match them, uh, turn one feature off here or turn another feature on there and get something that works better for you. The last one, of course, we can skip this, is uh, Advanced Warehouse with Directed Pick Put Away. If you click on one more switch in Business Central and that's Directed Pick Put Away, immediately, all other options, bins, receiving, put away, pick, ship, 
become grayed out and now you are in the configuration which is considered to be the king of warehousing in business central it provides you a lot of functionality that we discussed and allows you to do a lot more but we have to keep in mind there are certain limitations associated with feature uh, turned on such as um, overpicking for the production which we're not touching in um, in this uh, webinar uh, and also there are some more when directed pick away is turned on sometimes it requires more effort to complete certain modifications if the customer needs to create those so that's why we're very careful carefully considering if we should be turning directed pick put away on or keep it off and that's very important to remember when you are discussing internally what needs to be done with your warehouse uh, before or at the time when you're having conversations with the Novia team. The documents, pretty much we just have to keep in mind that the warehouse receipt on the receiving side uh, stays the same. It basically allows you to process the receiving, put it in the receiving bin. Instead of using the inventory, uh, P, uh, um, instead of you, uh, I'm sorry, um, the warehouse put it now we have a warehouse put away instead of a put away um, on the warehouse shipping side we have a warehouse pick instead of inventory pick and then we have a warehouse shipment uh warehouse picks and warehouse uh, and inventory picks are need to be considered carefully when you use them i'll just give you a quick example of how the warehouse pick may work differently from the inventory pick and that's related to the uh, production environment for example if you're in the environment where directed pick put away is not enabled, um, you can perform either a warehouse pick when you need to move the inventory into inbound production bin, or you can perform an inventory pick. Main difference that you need to remember is that if you uh, create an inventory pick, when you post that pick, the inventory not only going to be removed from the pickable bin but it's also going to be consumed on the consumption journal at that point in time so it happens automatically if you don't need this to be to happen what you need to do is just create a warehouse pick and in this case when warehouse pick is posted the inventory is going to be moved from the pickable bin to the production inbound bin, and then you can uh, consume it manually at the later time. So one thing that uh, you need to keep in mind. So at this point, we are pretty much at the end of the configuration review. And uh, what I would like to do is briefly stop by on, on the uh, location card and just show you where all of those features are enabled, uh, available so you know where to go in case if you need to modify or adjust your configuration. So the location card, the warehouse fast tab, you have all the features here. You have require receive shipment put away, um, use put away worksheet. If it's disabled, then basically this you, you can create um, a put away uh, worksheet. Um, you, you can't use a put away worksheet. Um, basically, at this point in time, all of your put aways will be created automatically. So, if you do need, if you are considering using a put away worksheet, then you may want to enable this feature as well. Um, use AC. A, I'm sorry. Use ADCS. Uh, automatic data collection system is usually not turned on anymore in Business Central because there are a lot of um third-party solutions at, at least two are very well known to a lot of companies it's uh warehouse inside by uh inside works and uh lanham ace warehouse so basically those two take care of uh, uh managing uh the data collection on the handheld devices in the previous uh, days when uh the warehouse automation automated solutions were not available you could build some additional functionality around ad uh, cs right in nav at the time but uh, in business central that's not uh, what's happening 
Uh, default bin selections allows you allows you to basically de to define if the directed pick put away is an enabled. Where do we go? Uh, how does the system should look at the bins when it's cons when it's evaluating uh, where to put the inventory away or pick from? Outbound warehouse handling time and inbound warehouse handling time is useful in uh, uh, in the planning process. Uh, base calendar code allows you to pretty much just uh, identify which are down days for the warehouse and not again, which is helpful in the planning process. Um, cross docking we discussed, and then that other parameter that I mentioned when we discussed cross docking is cross dock due date calculation, which allows you to uh, um, I let the system know how far in advance we have to look for the orders to see if we need to use cross docking or just put the inventory away. The next one is again on the location card and its bins. And it's very simple. You basically identify what are the default bins for all of your uh, warehouse processes, receiving, shipment, production, assembly. And um, uh, with directed pick put away, also you need to keep in mind the adjustment bin uh, that is used um, and allows us to separate those duties or tasks to break it down between the warehouse team and the financial team. So warehouse team can perform the warehouse adjustments and the financial team can post uh, the documents and uh, change the quantities in the system as well as uh, hit the general ledger with the financial impact. The last tab that you may want to take a peek at are is bin policies. This is where basically we identify some of the parameters that we discussed, such as special equipment, bin capacity, allow break bulk. Here we also can assign a put away template at the location level. And then uh, if directed pick put away is enabled, we can also tell the system if we need to always create a put away line, even if we don't have any uh, put away bins available. And the same pertains to the pick lines. And one of the features which is always available regardless if directed pick put away is on or off, it is uh, pick according to FEFL, which is first expired, first out, basically allows the companies to pick expired products before that expire. The way expiration date is the closest to the current date first before picking the same product that has the expiration date in the future. So, this point in time, we complete our review of the um, warehouse flavors and what parameters are available and what functionalities are available in Business Central to configure our warehouses. And it's time for questions. All right, Andre, thank you. We do have a couple questions that came through. The first one is, so if we answer no to 10 of the 12 questions for DPP and sort of for the other two, does that mean likely DPP is not a great option for us? Um, I'm just trying to remember the last two questions. I know one was a separation of duties and the other one, um, let me actually quickly uh, move to that slide so I ref refresh my mind real quick. Automated bin replenishment. Okay, oh, 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 yeah. If the answer, if I understand this correctly, if the answer to uh, 10 questions, to the first 10 questions is no, and the last two is maybe, then directed pick put away isn't a feature that would the company would be interested in. I would say probably uh, yes, then you don't need to have the directed pick put away on. But in a lot of cases, automated bin re replenishment may change the view of the company, especially when you're looking for some directions from the system on how to replenish your pickable bins. So it depends on the particular situation that we would need to review, um, probably outside of this call, if the, uh, if the, uh, if the attendee has a, still has a question. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, and the next question. If we started and implemented DPP, how can we back up and modify to be a hybrid version to have bins and maybe shipment? Or will this create issues given the history? It's uh, an interesting question. The answer is yes, you can disable directed pick put away. The effort will depend on uh, the particular environment. I just recently went through this um, process and uh, had to disable directed pick put away to simplify to some degree uh, the processes that company goes through. So yes, it's possible. The effort will need to take a look and at each case uh, separately to identify what would be involved. Okay, thank you. And then refresh us. What is FEFO in the bin policy pick section? Uh, FEFO, commonly referred as FEFO, uh, please do not mix it up with FIFO. FIFO and LIFO are costing methods. FEFO is first expired, first out. This is the rule that is applicable to the companies that keep an eye on the expiration dates associated with the lots on the product. A good example would be a food distributor. You definitely want to send the cases out to the uh, retail locations that expire first before you go to the shipment of cases that has an expiration date in the future. That's just what it is. Okay, thank you. A couple more questions. Is there a way in BC to receive inventory into a QA bin and make sure that this inventory is not available for picking until it passes the inspection? Well, again, depending on the configuration, it, it's possible in both cases with directed pick put away turned on or directed put, pick put away turned off. If we're looking at the simplest scenario where we just need to direct the inventory into the uh, QC bin at the time of the receiving and sort of segregate it from the rest of the inventory before we check and make sure that it passes the inspection, it's still possible. Um, and uh, can be achieved by setting up a combination of the parameters such as default bins and dedicated bins. So, but it is fully possible as well in the environment where DPP is not turned on. Uh, with directed pick put away, it would just mean that you would need to put the inventory away into a bin that like we discussed has no um, um, has no bin type. And in this case, you would need to perform that by doing the internal putaways or movements. The answer is yes. Okay, thank you. And one last question. Can pickable bins be replenished based on the historical usage in addition to minimum, maximum levels? <laughs> I was hoping that all the answers would be yes. And uh, unfortunately, I think this one is going to be no. Uh, there is no currently a functionality in, um, available in Business Central that allows you to take a look at the historical usage of the item and make a determination of what we need to move into a pickable bin outside of just using a mean max levels assigned to the bin. And I know for some companies it's very important again, especially for those companies that go through the seasonal cycles where they might need to uh, replenish this bin with more quantities if we're go going into the spring season or maybe just start winding down if we're getting closer to the winter. So unfortunately the answer uh, for this is no but the modification can be created that and be and added to the system that will allow you to do that. Okay, another question came through. 
This one's pretty long. Um, for the QA requirements, we have set up a unique location and do transfer orders to move it completely, I'm sorry, to move it out completely so that it takes it out of location availability. And it also allows us to see how much of our inventory is currently being held by QA. We also set up a unique financial account for QA inventory so that we can see the value on our financials that show how much is pending review. Yes, that's more so of a I statement. Guess, so I guess the question is, uh, in what cases do we need to have a QA as a location versus having a QA as a bin? I would say QA as a location is important in those cases when the QC or quality assurance process takes longer time, where it may take maybe a week before you evaluate the product. And especially it's also important in the cases to have a QA set up as a location when you are running the planning worksheet to basically plan your uh, production and replenishment processes. Because you have to keep in mind that if the inventory is segregated in the bin, in the QC bin, when planning worksheet runs, it only looks at the location level. It will still consider that inventory as available for planning purposes, not maybe not maybe not necessarily for the uh, fulfillment processes, but for the planning pur purposes, it will be definitely enabled. So, if that's the case, then you need to segregate the inventory and move it into a separate QA location. QC bins are very helpful when you really receive the inventory in the morning, and by the end of the day, uh, your uh, quality team goes through everything what was received. Maybe it's just a smaller subset of items that require um, a quality process. And then by the end of the day, it's moved to a pickable bin. But you want to make sure that during that uh, span of like maybe eight to 10 hours, that inventory isn't considered uh, by sales order when we go through the fulfillment process. So uh, hopefully this answers the question. If, uh, Clark, you still have um, uh, uh, some. Um, follow-ups on this, please reach out to me directly and we can discuss it further. All right. Well, I believe those are all the questions that we have for you, Andre. Thank you very much for the presentation and for everyone on our webinar today. Thank you very much for attending. And if you're watching on demand, thank you for taking the time out to join us. Um, Andre, do you have any last minute thoughts that you'd like to share with the group? Um, well, what I would like to say is the following. First of all, well, thank you very much for uh, to everybody who joined the webinar. I know you took uh, valuable time out of your day. Warehousing isn't that complex as a lot of people think it is, as long as you understand what is happening, how the functionality works. And of course, we're here always for you to help you with to answer your questions and assist you with the requirements and also work hand in hand as you are implementing warehousing processes for your company. So again, thank you very much for joining. Have a great day and uh, enjoy working with Business Central and Orvin is always here for, for you guys. All right, thank you, Andre. Don't forget to check out our website for more of our upcoming events and that's anovia.com slash events. And also check out our training workshop page at anovia.com slash workshops. We have a variety of workshops to fit your role. So check out the ones that will fit for you and your team. And if you haven't heard the latest on the Anovia Conversation podcast, we have a library of podcast episodes for you to listen to. And you can learn more on our podcast page. And that's anovia.com slash podcast. So browse through our selection and subscribe so you'll get notified when those new episodes air. And don't forget to check out our conference page, anovia.com slash conferences. 
our customer conference is coming up on May 4th and 5th at the University of Notre Dame. This is a free event for you to attend, so make sure you read up on all the details and register today so you can come meet the Inovia team, our ISVs, and our clients. All right, well, we thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you soon on another Inovia webinar. Take care, everyone.